Hey guys, before I start this video, I want to show you this little unit. And I'm going to be talking about this in the video, uh, but upon watching a lot of YouTube videos, I wanted to only see one thing. I'm like, I already got this unit. Please tell me the numbers that I should be getting when I'm doing my compression test. And uh, those numbers are between 100 and 120 PSI. So if you bought this unit on eBay for like 300 bucks, congratulations. I bought one too. Um, that's probably what you want to know. And um, consider watching the rest of the video. Um, I got some interesting knowledge to share. Uh, some stuff on my channel is going to be straight to the point, and some stuff I just want to share some ideas with you guys and get your feedback and uh, actually reply to you guys, which I'm sure you've seen me doing that on this channel. And uh, I'm really interested to learn what you guys think on a lot of stuff. Enjoy the video. Hey guys and welcome to my Mazda RX-8 channel. My name is Serge and in today's video I want to show you my new Mazda compression tester. Now since I started this channel, I've been having some issues with my Mazda RX-8 and a lot of you guys was writing to me in the comments a lot of helpful, helpful tips and comments for which I really, really, really appreciate you guys for. So, that being said, of course, I want to bring a lot to the Mazda RX-8 community, RX-7, anything rotary to that community and to share my knowledge and understanding and whatever I learn. I guess it's all the same thing, right? So, <clears throat> that being said, guys, early this year, I bought myself a Mazda RX-8. This car was something I always desired ever since I've seen the Fast and the Furious Tokyo Drift. And I've seen that blue one in there, and I thought, you know, wow, that kind of looks cool. I, I like it. You know, of course, the RX-7 showed up in the very first uh, movie fast and furious as a matter of fact i remember walking out of that movie theater and everybody's like revving their engines outside including me at the time i was uh driving my honda accord and uh it was still kind of fun but anyways guys that being said um after buying this mazda rx8 i bought it with the starting issue it did not want to start up so i got a very good deal on it i bought it for under two thousand dollars that being said that was not the only issue that the car had uh this car was actually previously wrecked right in the rear rear uh wheel on the driver's side you know and i needed to change some tie rods which i actually did on my main channel and then i kind of thought you know what this is a mercedes sprinter channel that i've been doing for the past six years i think i should just start a separate Mazda rx8 channel for the Mazda rx8 community that way these videos are not going to be buried okay so that being said it was some body work to be done I done the body work. I had to straighten out some panels. Um, I actually used um, a heat gun and I straightened out my bumper. So I was actually able to reuse it. I've actually bought the Mazda RX-8 paint and I kind of thought, you know what? Uh, it's very expensive because it's got apparently pearl in it. Um, but anyways, guys, I'm just trying to give you guys like a little rundown, okay? Of course, after getting a Mazda RX-8, I kind of thought you could use a normal type of tester, which I did get. Let me show you. You know, I thought you need something like this. And so I got one of these. But after doing some research, I realized, no, you can't really use that. Sure, some people are using something like this. It's kind of different. Um, and doing so many calculations. And I thought, you know what? I'm pretty good with math. I'm pretty good with video editing. But I don't feel like having to collect those information, slow the videos down, speed them up, put the numbers in with all the elevations and all the other shenanigans. Believe it or not, guys, that's all confusing to me. I kind of didn't get it. But I'm sure you guys probably seen that video too. It was a great video, by the way, because that was a lot of work and I kind of thought, you know, is there a better way? And yes, there it is. Um, I, went on U on, I went on eBay, started searching, and I found this right here. Let me show you what's inside. I'm sure this is probably why you came here. And of course, uh, in today's video, I just want to kind of share some of the information about this unit just to kind of like let you guys know uh, what's out there. Uh, currently, um, I'm planning to actually uh, test my Mazda RX-8 um, uh, for its compression. 
firstly, I guess let's get into it. So, which which is kind of cool that you actually get a a business card, all right? But there's actually so much advertisement on this unit and including like when you turn it on because I watched other videos uh, on that as well after I got it. Uh, but I went, when I actually went on uh, eBay and I've seen this particular one, I kind of thought, wow, that's kind of cool. I like that it's got the orange case. You could get any kind of case you want and uh, it's got the, you know, Navy display. Uh, I don't know if you could see that. And then, it's, you know, it's got like white lettering and stuff. And one of my mechanic outfits is actually like that. It's navy with orange. And this is my other style that I also use. Um, but anyways, uh, there's also a website. And apparently this is an email for rotary compression tester at yahoo.com. Um, but there is a website, uh, rotary compression tester.com, which is kind of cool. Very simple. Um, now, here's kind of like what I did. Okay, when I went to eBay, I read the description for this thing and it said that it actually was discounted on eBay from its original price on um, on the website. Because technically, I believe it's a $350 unit and there was like a $70 discount. So on eBay, I believe it was listed for like $275 and I bought it and I think with Texas it came out like $300. But I'm going to put it up here kind of like what I paid for it. Um, but before paying for it, of course, I like to shop around. I actually went to this website and in the eBay description, there was a code that you could use to get the same discount. And it said I could get the same price that it's on eBay on the website if I use that code. But I kind of decided, you know what, I'm just gonna go ahead and actually just buy, buy it on eBay. Uh, it really didn't matter where I really ordered from. Um, but anyways, that being said, there's a business card in here with the phone number, which is kind of cool because I don't even give my phone number out because I got millions of views on my other channel. And in the beginning, I guess I did. And I got flooded with phone calls. I was not able to get any sleep. So there is a nine volt battery included based on everything that I've learned about this unit. You have to use a very good battery. It is a good thing that battery is included. So, you could probably mess up this unit if you use a low quality battery and probably because acid leaks out of them and stuff. And I've seen a lot of toys get messed up, especially if you put like El Cheapos in there. So make sure you put a good battery. There's one already included for you. Now this particular thing right here, uh, it includes a couple little seals, which you could kind of see back there, these little black ones. Uh, there's already one seal uh, that's on here, uh, also with a protective case. So I will actually, I will actually explain everything, guys. Um, what numbers you should be actually expecting when you're actually doing a compression test? Because I watch so many videos, and people kind of fail to mention that, and it's kind of like a waste of time. It's like you're thinking, well, yeah, I got the unit too. I want to know what number's supposed to be because you know. But anyways, I will also repeat this in the beginning because I haven't at this point. But in editing, I'm gonna add that. But you should be seeing between 100 and 120 PSI reading. This is if like you're in America and you have those reading. But of course, this one also displays like KPA and all of this other stuff that I don't understand, which is kind of cool. Um, I'm also gonna include some links of other people that done the test and the numbers that it was showing for their cars because I took some screenshots as I was doing it. So probably as I'm talking, I'm actually explaining some of that stuff. But anyways, the procedure to actually test um, your compression what you need to do is you're gonna need to pull out your fuel um, fuel relay so that when you actually turn the key it is not gonna be pumping fuel um, I'm also gonna display a picture of where the fuel uh, fuel fuse is located next you need to actually disconnect the power from the um, uh, from the crankshaft which is also called something else because it's technically not a crankshaft position sensor but I call it crankshaft position sensor because guess what? If you're gonna scan the codes, it's gonna be telling you it's a crankshaft code. So if you know the other word, which I kind of forgot right now because I'm not really familiar with it, then you're gonna be confused. You'll be like, what? What's a crankshaft code? But it's kind of interesting that the actual thing, uh, the sprocket that spins on the outside of the engine, I guess it's got a unique name. And it's probably where that uh, name comes from. But the crankshaft position sensor is actually on the outside of your engine out of all places. I already replaced mine and there's a good chance uh, you probably already seen my video. If you haven't, uh, check that video out. If I will remember, I'm going to link it up in the description below. 
that video. I actually probably need to do that in all my videos. Uh, I need to update all of them and write the names names of my videos and the links to those videos. I'm gonna actually do that just to make things easier. All right, so that being said, to uh, get the proper, um, to test your compression, disconnect the fuel relay switch, you know, uh, then crankshaft position sensor. Then you're gonna need to remove both of your spark plugs, which are trailing at the very top. And it's okay if you're just inserting this into one of the holes, that's fine, because each cylinder is separated. As a matter of fact, it would be a good idea for you to have both of them out. It's gonna give you more proper readings. But before you attempt to do any tests, if your car is starting, of course, make sure that you warm it up before you attempt to do this test, that it's going to be at a proper operating temperature. Then remove the spark plugs, make sure you don't try to burn yourself. And then of course, when you plug this in into the trailing spark plug hole, and it doesn't matter which one you're gonna put it in, cylinder one, cylinder two, make sure you just write it down which cylinder you're putting it into and what kind of codes are you getting. Um, I would also recommend record the screen because the screen is gonna be constantly uh, alternating with different type of readings. So you could have all the readings uh, and then you could take some screenshots for yourself. Uh, that's what I would do. So anyways, when you plug this in, uh, there's a cable which uh, extends that type of connector, which I highly recommend that you use. This will allow you then to plug this cable into it. And when you do, you could sit inside of your car and you press this red button for this display to come on. And it needs to uh, find out its altitude um, for some reason, but that's just how these things work. So you gotta give it some time for it to you know, do its little thing, and then it's gonna kind of like calculate, and then it's gonna tell you start the engine. So you need to actually start uh, cranking the engine uh, over until all the bars fill up, and when they fill up, stop cranking. Uh, at that point, uh, you will need to, I guess, just look at these readings, and uh, of course, I recommend just record the entire process of your screen, that way you could see uh, what's being displayed. So when you're done with that, simply, um, disconnect that long wire from this little short thing right here, disconnect it. Make sure that this black seal is still intact. You don't want to lose it. And uh, make sure that you do not uh, put this any other way except hand tight with your hands. Like don't be putting any tools on it. You want to just kind of like, you know, put this into the trailing spark plug hole. Just hand tight, that's it. Do not try to overdo it, okay? So remove it from the other trailing spark plug hole. You don't need to put the spark plug back in just yet. Stick this thing in another one and do the readings. Now, I've seen, you know, different type of readings, okay? And uh, the recommended is between 100 and 120. That's kind of like health engine. If yours is a 90, that's also okay. I've seen it as low uh, as 60, pretty much on all the places. Um, like 60 PSI and the engines are still cranking over, uh, which is kind of interesting, but that was kind of like, I guess, an isolated case because that, uh, that was the second cylinder that had all the 60s. The first one had uh, as, as much as 80, so possibly it was causing uh, it to uh, help with it starting up and stuff like that. Um, there's also like another thing I wanna let you know, guys. Um, I've been watching a lot of different RX-8 videos and I think I'm already seeing some people uh, kind of like misdiagnosing some of their RX-8s. Uh, partly due to the fact that they don't have one of these um, to kind of know like what's going on and including myself. See, I'm seeing myself in some of those videos. So partly kind of like what I'm seeing is a lot of people are having a problem starting their RX-8s on hot. And well, replace the crankshaft position sensor. I know it's, uh, it's named something else and I'm probably gonna have it pop up here on the screen somewhere, but <sighs> replace it. It's very easy to do. It's a 10 millimeter bolt that holds it. Uh, all you have to do is lift up your car. Like, like you could literally drive up on stands, climb underneath of it, and there's like a little opening, not much. You'll be able to kind of get some flathead screwdrivers in there and kind of like work that little plug out of the way. It's tough to really get your hands in there, but I was able to do it with just long flathead screwdrivers, just kind of like press a little tap and 
just work it out of there. That's what I did. I actually have it in the video uh, as I was doing it. Um, so I think if people would just install a $13 crankshaft position sensor from eBay, they will have a little bit better luck of starting up their, their vehicles. And now for my story, well, I thought with everything that I was facing with my vehicle, like not starting up, like I thought my engine was done. Okay. That's what I was thought. I thought it was done. It was blown. I was kind of upset about it because I wasn't really waiting uh, for an opportunity to rebuild this engine because I really don't want to spend the money just yet. Um, as a matter of fact, I have a list that I've made of everything that I spent on the car so far, and it's a little bit over $1,600. So that brings up my cost of ownership at this point, even though I got the car on the cheap at $3,600. Uh, not including registration and titling and insurance. I mean, that's something out of the way, but just purchasing a car, just servicing with stuff that's not even that expensive, you know, but I already bought a lot of different things. So uh, whenever I get done with working out all of its problems, of course, I'm going to put it on the market. I'm going to try to sell it. But before I will, I'm going to find another Mazda RX-8 and I'm going to try to basically... Make sure it's working again, like bring it to, I'm lost for words today, but I, I had this word in my head that I want to use, but but basically I want to work out all the problems out of another Mazda X8 and, and save it, you know, to keep it from the junkyard. Because I've been looking at a lot of Facebook marketplace pictures and I could see some of these things that are pretty cheap, but some of them you could tell they're just kind of like junked, like nobody kind of wants them and people are kind of like parting them out. But I do believe there is um, a need to kind of restore some of these Mazda RX-8 because uh, based on everything that I've learned so far, this Mazda RX-8 has gotten some hate and some love. But obviously it's not being considered in the same category as the predecessor Mazda RX-7 uh, due to a lot of factors. Um, I guess uh, partly uh, emission standards are to blame. Uh, because when they designed this engine, they made it a high compression engine, which uh, prevented you from actually putting a turbocharger in there. And based on all the information that I've learned, uh, it is still safe to um, put a turbo on it. You'll just have to run it at 5 PSI. Uh, and the transmission itself, which I believe it's talking about the automatics, it can withstand about 350 horsepower safely. You could probably squeeze a little bit more out of it, but we're talking about like safely for a daily driver. Um, I've seen a lot of interesting things uh, from what people have been doing uh, to these Mazda RX-8. I've seen case swaps. I've seen um, LS swapped. I've seen two JZ swaps. And all of those look kind of interesting. And um, I actually ordered myself a shop uh, 54 by 31. And... That's definitely something I'm going to be working on, like different type of projects inside. But what I'm kind of like more like interested in, it is that, but at the same time, maybe take a car that is like, for instance, uh, let's think of something. Let's take like a 350Z, for instance, right? Like a Nissan product. And instead of having a 3.5 liter engine in there, 3.7, put a rotary in there. Like, that's kind of like what I'm thinking. Uh, or... Let's say this other thing. Mazda RX-8 got some hate because this engine, supposedly, the way it sits, um, you can't really get a lot of performance out of it. But it's got a lot of love where, where it counts, which is handling. It's got incredible handling. What about taking a Mazda RX-8 engine and putting that inside of a Mazda RX-8? I think that would be a really good idea. And uh, doing like a turbocharge, turbocharger or twin turbocharge on it. Uh, I've seen uh, what Rob Don is doing on his channel, and uh, he put a four rotor in his Corvette, out of all things. So that was quite interesting to watch. So I think rotaries have a lot more potential to actually be seen in other cars. I think that would be kind of interesting uh, to see them in there. Um, and I'm definitely interested to learn a lot more when it comes to rotaries, because I'm kind of thinking... Is there something you can do to this Mazda RX-8 engine, the way it sits, to maybe 
use some of the components from the Mazda RX-8 engine in combination with the Mazda, you know, uh, RX-8 engine. Uh, for instance, to have better intake air so you don't have to port it and better exhaust, you know, because people have been porting some of these engines. And I'm kind of thinking, can you maybe use some of those plates and some of those housings uh, in combination? No longer is considered like a high compression, but it would be safe to turbocharge it. Like you could definitely squeeze a lot more horsepower out of it. But I'm definitely interested in learning more when it comes to that. And um, I'm going to be working on some of these projects. Now, this probably should be like a video uh, all in itself. But this is something I want to mention just so you guys know kind of like a little bit where I'm coming from and I probably should make a separate video on that but I own about 22 cars currently and um, I live below my means and everything's paid for I literally have like no mortgage uh, like none of this expensive I try to live on cash basis so this is why I'm not afraid to experiment a little bit uh, and I'm at that point in my life to where I'm kind of thinking that I would like to have some fun. That's what I would like to do. I would like to be able to take some cars and swap some engines around and tune them and, you know, do those kind of things for fun. Like, that's like really what I, what I would like to do. Um, it's probably like a midlife crisis in me that's saying that, but it's okay. I'm going to have fun with it because I've been working really hard for the past like 20 years and I think I deserve a break and work hard again but except this time hard on my car projects because i got so many plans and it it's not even funny like it's never gonna end i just need to get my shop in uh, because it's gonna be completely paid for i don't have to worry about like the money situation i'm just gonna take it as it comes i'm like i'm not rich but i try to live on cash basis you know and that allows me to to uh think outside the box and to be a little bit creative and I have a down-to-earth personality I literally like to have fun and um, some of my friends that I have they live like really far away and uh, some of them wish to live closer so we could actually do some kind of crazy projects together um, which I think would be fun but anyways guys thank you so much for watching take care of yourself and see you guys in the next video bye bye